Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to introduce another parametric equation word problem. And again, for this video, you are going to want access to your graphing calculator, and you'll want that set in parametric mode and in degree mode. So let's take a look at this particular problem. This is going to be a little bit more complicated than the last one. So we have a baseball player who hits a line drive off the end of the bat four feet above the ground. The ball's initial velocity is 84 miles per hour. And is hit at an angle of 27 degrees, or our launch angle is 27 degrees, towards the alley and left field. So again, we'll give you your equations for the horizontal distance, or how far the ball goes. So will it reach the fence or not? So x equals v sub zero, where that's our initial velocity, cosine of theta, our launch angle is theta, and t is time. So we have distance in feet, time in seconds, and speed in feet per second. Our vertical distance, or our height, is our y. y equals negative 16t squared plus v sub zero sine of theta t plus s sub zero. So s sub zero is again our initial height and so the four feet is our s sub zero. Our theta is 27 and t of course is time and y is our height. So it makes sense that our, our y axis our height has sine in it and our x distance or our horizontal distance has cosine. One issue we have here is the 84 miles per hour, and we need our speed, our velocity, to be in feet per second. So we're going to have to do a conversion of 84 miles per hour to feet per second. So we need to convert that guy. So to do our conversion, we have 84 miles in one hour. And we know we want this in feet per seconds, so we know there are 3,600 seconds in one hour, and I set that upside upside down. So one hour and 3,600 seconds. So we want feet per seconds. We want seconds in our denominator and our hours are gonna cancel, so now I have that right. And there's 5,280 feet in a mile, and we want feet in our numerator, so 5,280 feet in one mile, so our miles will cancel and we'll be left with feet. So we put all that into our calculator, 84 divided by 3,600 times 5,280, and we get 123.2 feet per second. So this is our V. And then we're asked to write our parametric equations which model the flight of the ball. So our X or our horizontal distance, 123.2 cosine of 27. All that and times our y, T. Negative 16 t squared plus v sub zero t. So I'm going to do t times 123.2 sine of 27 plus our s sub zero, our initial height, four feet from the ground, so plus four. So we want to use our calculator to graph the path of the ball and then sketch the graph. set up a graph. Now again, like we did with the football problem, it pays to think here about what's going to happen to a baseball. Like, how far is a baseball hit? You know, have you been to a baseball game? Do you know how far it is out to deep center field? Um, how long does it take? How high does it go? Those are questions you want to ask. A home run is generally over 400 feet it goes over the wall 400 feet. So we probably want to go uh, an X distance of maybe 450 feet. 
Now, how high does it go? Uh, that's a really good question. Our Y value, I'm thinking, might be you know 75 feet or so. That seems pretty high. So let's try that. Let's go to our calculator and input our parametric equations, and then we'll use this information here to set our window, and then we'll get a picture of what we'll be able to come back and, and put on our graph. So I go to my graphing calculator, and again, make sure it's in parametric and degree mode. So I went into the mode key here, and I'm already set at degrees and parametric. And I can go to my y equals, and I went ahead and I took the liberty. I have input my two equations, my x equation, uh, 123.2 cosine of 27 times t, and then the negative 16t squared plus 123.2 sine of 27t plus uh, whatever that value was. I'll go ahead and set my window. I've got it set for six seconds and to count by every one-tenth of a second. So that'll be pretty good. Uh, my x min is negative one, so that's going to be about the catcher right behind home plate. And x max 150, well we said a home run was going to be closer to 400 and over 400. So I'm going to go out to 450 feet. Uh, I'm going to count by 50s. My scale on my x-axis will be 50 feet. And then my y min, my height, uh, we want to go a little bit higher than 50 feet, we think. So let's go to 75 feet. Well, we'll count by fives. Um, and let's take a look at our graph and see what that looks like. So we graph that, and I get a, a pretty good looking graph here. So we went out to 450 feet, so, and we counted by 25, so it looks like this ball is gonna, gonna land around just short of 425 feet. You can see here we began off the ground at four feet, um, and then our maximum height somewhere along here, um, and it, at that particular uh, distance is, is our height. We don't know what the time is, but, um, and I think I did these every five feet. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 50. Yeah, it looks like around 55 feet high that'll be. So let's go ahead and, and sketch out our graph. It's gonna start here at, at five feet and it's gonna go up and it'll come down here. I'll extend that out. And I think we said this was 450 feet and we counted by 50s, right? Um, go back to my calculator real quick in my window. Yep, I counted by 50s. So 400 and that would be 50 and this would be five and This was right around 50 feet, okay? So here's my Y's or my height, and here's my distance. The opposing shortstop is playing in the direct path of the ball, 120 feet from home plate. Does he have a chance to catch the ball? Let's take a look here, 50, 100, 150, 120 feet. That looks like that ball is gonna be pretty high based on our graph, but let's Algebraically, let's figure that out. Well, the 120 feet from home plate, that is an X value. And what we want to find is the Y. We can substitute into our X equation 120 equals 123.2 cosine 27 times t, and we can solve for t, because once we know the time at which it's 120 feet, then we can substitute into our y equation. We can take that time, put it into y, and see how high it is. We'll see if it's over the shortstop's head. Dividing both sides by all of this 123.2, we get uh, t equals 120, all divided by 123.2 cosine 27. Be careful with your parentheses when putting that in your calculator. And we get a value of t 1.093 seconds. So we know at 1.093 seconds, it's gonna be hit a distance of 120 feet, but we wanna know how high it is. So the height is gonna be the y equation. So we'll use y equals, and I'll give myself a little bit more room, negative 16 
times 1.093, that's t squared, plus 123.2 times 1.093, which is t sine of 27, plus 4. So now I've put my time into my y equation, because my y equation gives me the height, and I get y equals, once I put all that in my calculator, 46.018 feet. Uh, that would be pretty ambitious for our shortstop. Um, I think I spelled ambitious right. Uh, so I would say no, he's not going to catch the ball. Let's go on to question D. If the Brewers are playing in Wrigley Field and the fence at, at the left field alley is 11.5 feet high and 368 feet from home plate, does the ball clear the fence? There's a couple ways to do this. We have both a y and an x value here. What we have traditionally done is we want to find out the time at which it's 11 and a half feet high. So one, calculate time at y equals 11.5. So we'd have to put that into our y equation. 11.5 equals negative 16t squared plus 123.2 sine of 27 times t plus 4. Subtracting 11.5 from both sides, I get 0 equals negative 16t squared plus 123.2 sine of 27 times t and minus 7.5. So now I can put this in the quadratic formula and solve for t. Now I'm going to get two values for t, but I'm going to want the second value for t, or the longer value, because it's, it's going to hit this 11.5 feet high once on the way up and then once on the way down, and I want it on the way down, so I want the second value of t. So put this into my quadratic formula, negative 123.2, sine of 27, that's the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 123.2 sine of 27. And I want to square all that. Minus 4 times a, which is negative 16, times c, which is negative 7.5. And be careful when you put this in your calculator. It's all over 2a, or negative 32. And when I do that, I get a t value of 3. I get a t, two different t values, but my second t value is 3.356. So that's the second time that it's at 11. Feet. So now I want to see how far it is from home plate when it's 11 and a half feet high. By putting that time in to my x equation, then I can see how high it is. So I get x equals 123.2, and this is an x, so it's the cosine of 27, and all that times 3.2. 356. So I multiply all that by 3.356, I get x equals 368.39 feet. So at that time, when it's 11 and a half feet high, it's at 368.39 feet, which is just beyond home plate. So it does appear that this is high enough to be a home run if the fielder does not rob the batter of that home run. So yes, it's a home run pending a great defensive play. In E, it says repeat part D. If they are at Miller Park where the left field alley is 370 feet, 71 feet away from home plate and the fence is eight feet high. So again, the 371 feet away is our X and the eight feet high is our Y. So we could back into T, say, hey, at what time is it 371 feet away, and then determine if it's eight feet high. 
It's like doing problem D, but we're going to do it in reverse. We've got part one, we're going to say 371 equals 123.2 cosine of 27 times T. And now we'll solve for T. Now we'll find that the T at which it's 371 feet away, we'll plug that T into the Y and see if it's above eight feet high. We get T equals 371 all over 123.2 cosine of 27. So be careful with your parentheses and we get T equals 3.3797. So 3.3797 seconds to go the 371 feet. So now we substitute that into Y. Come up here to Y, and Y equals negative 16 times 3.3797 squared plus 123.2 times 3.3797, right? That's our T, uh, sine of 27, plus four. Put that all in our calculator and we get a Y equals 10.274 feet after 3.37 seconds. It's gone 371 feet and it's still 10 feet in the air, so that's above the fence by two feet. That would also be a home run, again, pending an awesome defensive play. So what's the maximum height of the ball? Well, maximum height, we do the opposite of B over 2A to find our T. So T equals the opposite of B, negative 123.2 sine of 27 all over 2a or negative 32. We get a t of 1.748. So at that time, that's going to be the maximum height. Okay? All we that is the time we have to put that into our y equation to find out the maximum height. So y equals negative 16 times. 1.748 squared plus 123.2 times 1.748 uh, sine of 27 plus 4. And we get y equals 52.88 feet. So that's the maximum height. And then how long is the ball in the air if it's not caught and it does not hit anything before it hits the ground. So that question is asking when is our height zero? So we set our y equal to zero for that guy. So we get zero equals negative 16t squared plus 123.2 sine of 27t plus four. And this we'd have to put in the quadratic formula. And I'll leave that for you and ask you to bring that to class. So find out what our T is when the height is zero by using the quadratic formula. And with that, practice on parametric equations. We'll get some more of that when I see you in class.